Good morning. Please stand as you are able. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lord, risen Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Shall we be seated as we hear the reading from Scripture? The first reading is from the book of Acts, 17th chapter, and can be found on page 5 of your bulletin. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is, he served by, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
psalm for today is Psalm 66, found on page 6 of your bulletin, and we'll read it responsibly. Bless the beloved. Let the sound of our praises be heard. You keep us attuned to life. For you, O oh love, have tested us. You have allowed us to fall. You have watched us reap. We went through fire. Yet you have brought us through our pain. I enter your heart. I commend my soul. All that my lips uttered. I offer up to you. Come and hear all you who reverence the Most High. I cried aloud to the silent watcher of my life. Had I cherished greed and power from love? Blessed be the holy name of the beloved who embraced me. Good morning. Our second reading is from Peter, which can be found on page seven of your bulletin. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your heart, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. 
I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we come together today because we need you, we need one another, we need to hear your word, and if we hear it here, may we become so possessed by it that we become servants of it out in your world. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> it's wonderful to be back here with you all. What a treat for me and a treat for your rector who gets to go off on this glorious trip to Scotland. <laughs> Maybe like this in Scotland, who knows? <laughs> but we certainly need the rain, don't we? <clears throat> well, here we're in Easter season. This is the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. And in Today's passage from the Gospel, we read from the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John is one, as we know, of four different Gospels that tell the story of Jesus' ministry and of Jesus as he prepares to leave the people, prepares them for what they will be called to do as they carry on his ministry and the word. And what Jesus is doing in this passage that we just read, it's in the middle of three verses, three, three chapter, five chapters toward the end of the Gospel of John. And what's happening here, the context is that Jesus has called his disciples, his followers together. And what he's doing here is preparing them for when he will no longer be with them in person. And this was a very typical thing for a religious leader to have done in that time in the ancient Near East. A religious leader knowing that either he will be leaving them, going somewhere else, or will be dying, calls his followers together, prepares them for that, and then gives them instructions on how they're to carry on his, his ministry among them. And he may name some leaders that will carry on after him. He will give them final instructions and prayers and blessings as he leaves them. So that was a very familiar pattern to the people at Jesus' time. In fact, the Hebrew Bible Old Testament book of Deuteronomy is an entire farewell message from Moses because he is sending the people on into the promised land and he no longer will be with them. So the whole book is this farewell message and that's what we're reading from today. This small section here of these five chapters in the Gospel of John. And so it is set right prior to Jesus' uh, death, resurrection and ascension explaining why he has to leave them and preparing them for their future ministries. So these five chapters, there's basically three sections in these five chapters. <clears throat> the first is the 13th chapter that tells of the foot washing and then the teaching that goes with the foot washing. The second section is three chapters are Jesus really t teaching. It's an entire teaching. It's called the discourse, the Jesus teaching of those who will carry on after him. 
And then the third part of this big section, these five chapters, is the 17th chapter, and that's where Jesus prays to God for the people he is leaving. And you will be reading and praying about that chapter, the 17th chapter, that prayer that we get to hear. We get to overhear Jesus' prayer to God for Jesus' followers, Jesus' followers throughout time, including us today. We read from and celebrated the foot washing <clears throat> on Monday, Thursday, and what happens in this event, as we know, is that Jesus invites his followers to a meal. He is the host of the meal, and he is the leader, the host of the meal. And as they come for this meal, what he does is does the job of a servant. He invites the people into the house by taking off his outer clothing and wrapping himself in a towel and washing their feet. And that was a startling thing for Jesus to do, incredibly startling. That's only a servant did anything like that. And so what Jesus does this startling thing and responds to their reactions to it and then teaches them about what this means. And what, he, what this means is that this is what it actually feels like and looks like for the ministry that you are to carry on in the future as I have done, you are to do. So they get to enact that and be a part, part of that and see what it looks like. And he says, and I give you a commandment, a commandment, you are to love one another as I have loved you. I have shown you here, I have shown you throughout my time with you, and this is what you to carry on to do. Interestingly enough, as Jesus goes into this discourse section that we read from today, is that the Holy Spirit plays a big role in the Gospel of John, as John tells the story for his followers. <clears throat> this Holy Spirit doesn't play this heavy a role in any of the other three Gospels, but in John, the Holy Spirit is really powerful and really upfront. And what the Holy Spirit is doing and will be doing as Jesus is teaching them and showing them is to be with them when he's no longer with them. And what he's addressing here in all of these teachings and what he's doing and showing them is that, yes, indeed, he is the incarnate son of God. He came to be God among them to manifest God among them so that they could experience that. We know that as the incarnation, God taking human form. And what Jesus knows as he comes to the end of his ministry among them and knows that he will be going back to be with God is that it's very shocking for them because they have seen him and been with him and watched him and prayed with him and eaten with him for these months and years, and no longer will he be with them in person. So if God has taken human form with them in Jesus, what's going to happen when Jesus is no longer there? Does that mean that's the end of God's presence with them? Is that the end of the incarnation? Did it just take place in, take part in one place at one time? just one off event? And what Jesus is saying, absolutely not. What will happen is that the Holy Spirit, the advocate, he calls it in our English translation, is to be with you from now on. That the Spirit will be with you. And one of the things that's very clear, particularly in that period of time, <clears throat> is that Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit being with them with them in the community, with them as community, as a gathered body. And this is not a particular gift to an individual person. This is the Holy Spirit, the advocate, who will be with them all, all of the faithful people gathered together. The Spirit will be there with him, with them. And so this link between Jesus' ministry, his historical ministry, 
and the ongoing life of the community, now the church, is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this link. And that's what the key is in this passage that we just read from the Gospel of John. This Spirit gift is to all of us in community as we're gathered. So when we come here, the Spirit is here. The Spirit is here with us. What we remember is that Jesus made this commandment, and he repeats it at the very beginning of this passage. So one of the take-homes for us is that Jesus has given his followers a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So that's take home number one to remember. Take home number two is it's so clear in this passage that we just read. Jesus says, I'm not leaving you orphaned. The spirit will be with you. I am not abandoning you. You're not going to be out there on your own. The spirit will be with you. And the third take home, I think, is to find ways as we gather in community and wherever we are and whenever we are, to open our hearts to that spirit and to say, oh, the spirit is here. I'm going through a tough time, but the spirit is here. The spirit is with me. So the challenge is to open our hearts to that spirit. When we, are, when we are going through tough times, when we're going through glorious times, the Spirit is here. The Advocate is with us. We have not been abandoned. The Spirit is here. And so we come together to pray and hear the word and gather at the table and be fed yet again, reminded again and again that the Spirit is always with us. We have not been abandoned. One of the ways that I think is wonderful to celebrate this and to remind ourselves of this <clears throat> is to sing one of our hymns that we have in our hymnal. And you've been handed a piece of paper that has hymn number 508 in it. And hymn number 508 is about breathe on me breath of God. And Kathy is going to play it through for us once and then I'm going to invite you to just prayerfully sing the four verses of this hymn together. <clears throat> Amen.
Let's continue our worship as we stand and declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is sown and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 10 of your bulletin or on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Freddie L., Bonnie, Billy, Sharon, the Maiden family, Jordan, Carrie, John, Carrie, Georgie, Linda, Bill, Rita, Daryl, Richard, Gwenny, Dietmar, Kyle, Kim, Helen, Samantha, John, Sean and family, Michael, Clark, Lloyd, Freddie, Judy, Mick, Jen, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities, all who are sick and the healthcare workers who care for them. And today, let us pray together for our country. We pray for justice. We pray for peace. We pray for understanding. And we pray for an end of the racism, hatred, violence, and political division that continues to infect and divide this country. Hear us, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Melissa Zelt, Rick, Rick Plotke, David Thornton, Karen Hupp, and Camden Peterson, as well as those who have anniversaries, Mike and Kyle Boglin. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood in all its diverse forms. Let us pray for all mothers among us today, for our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers who loved us and for those who fell short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated, for all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers, and we who have done so for those in need and for the earth that bore us and provides us with our sustenance. We, we pray this all in the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Today's altar flowers have been given by Rebecca Williams in memory of her mom, Jane Ann, on Mother's Day. We exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, it's great to have Reverend Sandy with us today. The, the only drawback is I have to do announcements, so bear with me. Um, as you probably noticed, Father Brian isn't here. Uh, he, he's on a, uh, a fir the first leg of his sabbatical with a trip from a delegation from the uni university. 
the Diocese of Colorado over to Scotland and uh, just feel very empathetic with his uh, climate today. I'm sure he's experiencing the same thing. Just a few, uh, few announcements coming up. Um, while, while Father Brian is away, uh, if you do have pastoral needs, those are going to be met by a, a pastoral team and, and Father Al. Uh, if, so if you have any needs during uh, office hours, please call Ash and she'll uh, touch base with one of the pastoral care team and we can, we can respond. Um, if it's after hours, um, if you could give Father Al a call, he, he's on, on call for those, those pastoral needs. And then um, I, I'm just going to say I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled when, when Father Brian does his next leg of uh, the sabbatical in, in the fall. Uh, Reverend Sandy's going to be back with us for, for the month of September. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing her again. Just a few, um, there's a lot of announcements as always. I'm not gonna try and cover everything, but uh, one, one thing I know for sure, if your garden is like mine, uh, this, this rain, everything is just exploding. So I'm sure Kay would love some help in, in keeping the garden under control. And um, we also, the Bi Vocation Bible School planning is continuing. If you're interested in that area, please uh, let them know what's going on. And then I did notice spiritual, spirituality of fly fishing is coming up soon. Um, I, I did try to put an alternative event together of, of hunting for um, tofu, but no one seemed to be interested. <laughs> I guess, guess fly fishing wins out. But uh, please take a look at everything that's going on in the life of the parish. Thanks. Let us bring our offering and oblation of our life and labor to the Lord as we prepare the Lord's table.
Abend. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Our worship continues with the Eucharistic prayer C. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, a ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race. You blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you, we betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church, gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ lived and died and rose again for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Shall we stand as we pray together our post-communion prayer? Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you every step of the way and be your guide as your road changes and turns. And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you now and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ.